Welcome back. This video is going to focus on another assignment, so let's get started. If we look at our Gantt chart, we find that uh, in this planning project timeline, we're also looking at becoming an expert. And although it's due one day after prior solution attempts, we're going to go ahead and look at becoming an expert first. Because prior solution attempts, although due sooner, does last a little bit longer. All right, just as a quick reminder, you land on the home page here, click on this link. So once you click on that banner, it'll take you to the course landing page to which you can scroll down and find the buttons for the component that you're working in. And right now we're researching a problem. Here's the component one landing page. We're working within element A, identification and justification of a problem. We've done your added value, forming teams. You've gotten into some of the brainstorming solution documents by now. You've even looked at choosing a topic. If you haven't, be sure you go there and look at it. It is a discussion that you have to reply to. Here's the team's problem statement assignment. This assignment is something that you may have already started or looked at that video. You're going to be working on this assignment concurrently with team problem statements. Here's your problem statement documents, which you would have looked at with team's problem statements. And then worthy problem statement discussion that will open up a little bit later. Then becoming an expert is what we're looking at now. Now, as always, you should read the introduction. Basic background information is the foundation for more in-depth research. You may wish to seek the help of a librarian as you research deeper into your problem. A librarian typically has a master's degree in library sciences and is an expert at locating material in databases. One of the first things a librarian will ask for is a list of key terms and words associated with your subject. At this point in your research project, it is important to compile the information that has been collected in a concise format. Always in a concise format. In this activity, you will also identify organizations or associations. In this activity, you will also identify organizations or associations' contact information that'll help you now and later. You're gonna try and use this assignment to create something that your experts can see or look at so that they have a good understanding of what you're doing and demonstrate to them that you have some knowledge about this subject. So during this assignment, you're gonna create either a trifold brochure that you could mail out to people or even have as almost like a one pager for them to look at. Or your second option is to generate a website for them. Now, if you're already thinking of making a website to be able to display almost as an electronic portfolio, great idea, then this could just simply be a subsect of that. So obviously your resources are here. Now this is what I've provided for you. The engineering notebook, some type of computer or electronic device with internet. Mm, seems to be in every assignment, doesn't it? And then the trifold brochure template. Now you've probably never seen this unless you've taken a class with me where we've used it in the past. So that link brings you to this trifold brochure template. You may have used it in the past with another course that I have, but what's most important about it is that you can replace any text you can replace any picture. It just gives you the basic layout and also talks to you a little bit about how your brochure should communicate. If you need help with printing it, let me know. I can make a few here at home, but getting it out to your professionals that you're trying to touch base with is up to you and your team. Looking at the rest of the resources, they're things that you're familiar with. Effective research page, the research websites, the APA citations, those things are all very important. Working with experts and mentors and professional correspondence. There's a reason that these assignments are all concurrently happening. You're using a lot of the same resources to complete them. Procedure. Option one, trifold brochure. For this option, your team's going to create a brochure that can be used as a tool to capture your project's focus and why you think it's worth pursuing. As your project moves forward, this document can be used to communicate the major points of your project to a general audience or to help secure financial backing from organizations and businesses in your area. On the 31st, I'm meeting with Underwriters Laboratory, you know, UL, where you visited, or at least some of you did, when you were freshmen in IED. I can't promise that they're willing to help or even reach out, but it is in our agenda to discuss this class and what we're doing. I'll let you know what they say, but it'll be up to you to reach out to them and communicate. And that's exactly what I'm going to tell them. Using Google Docs and storing it in your shared Google Drive folder, 
prepare a trifold brochure. It's pretty straightforward, isn't it? Using the trifold brochure template, utilize the trifold brochure template and consider including the topics listed below. Project title. Choose a simple title that will easily describe your project. Pictures of clip art. Include images that are easy on the eyes, though. Keep the scale of the brochure in mind when selecting the images. Make sure we can tell what we're looking at. Personal information? Consider the following. You need a team name, or at least a name for your project. Most of you have a general idea of what this is. Work that out. Make sure that it makes sense. Remember, keep it professional. Please nobody be the mongooses. I won't allow it. Teammates' full names. Definitely important to have on here. The school name. You know, Riverside High School. A mailing address. Now, which one do you want to use because you're not at the school, so it might need to be your own personal address. You're not using mine, that's for sure. A teacher's name. This one you can use. You can put Mr. Davidson or Adam Davidson or Adam W. Davidson. If you need to know how to spell any of those, let me know. W is the hardest one to spell. A phone number to reach your team. Well, I would recommend that if you're worried about somebody having your number, you create a Google Voice number. It's a pretty simple thing to do. You just need to figure it out online. If you need some help with it, let me know. I'd even consider if you're going to do an email address to make one for your team. Gmail's great with this, but you could also list your email addresses if you want to. There's no harm in that. These professionals you're going to reach out to will be happy to reply with a like response that is also very professional and probably not share your information with other people. Let's move on to problem statement. You need to include it here. This is why it's important that this is concurrently going with the team's problem statement assignment. If we look at the Gantt chart, you can see that you have only a couple of days after the team's problem statement assignment is due to then get this trifold, or if you choose option two, the website finished and ready to be turned in. At the same time, you're also going to be finishing up prior solution attempts. So a lot going on. You have eight days that you should be working on drafting the problem statement. And by then, if you haven't already, move on to finalizing that problem statement. And in that same time frame, you have, it looks like, 15 days total to be able to get the becoming an expert thing taken care of. You might want to give this assignment to a person or two within your team and split up the workload a little bit if your team is big enough to do so. With your problem statement, you need to make sure that you have the proper grammar. Use your best grammar. State the problem your team settled on with the team's problem statement assignment. It could change and you could always update your document that you're creating, but have something solid to send out. Add any statistics you may have obtained. Make a point that the problem needs to be solved. You need to be able to justify that. Add basic background or history information that the general observer would need or want to be able to understand what your problem is, why it's important. Keywords or statements? List some terms or thoughts on the back of the brochure to help guide others in understanding your team's project. Now, even though my template doesn't necessarily show this, it's a good thing to put on the back in probably the, oh, I'd say center panel. Have a list of the experts. Obtain permission first, of course, from any that you've already contacted during the team's problem statement assignment, and then include any associations or organizations, societies, and or individuals connected to your problem. Now you might be asking yourself, if I'm sending this out to people that I need to have invest in my solution, wouldn't I have them on here? And some of them, yes. Others, maybe not. This is something you can use throughout the entire process. If the experts are okay with doing so, be sure to list their names and a website or at minimum some other type of contact information. When your team's finished, submit the brochure for evaluation. Obviously, it's going to be difficult for you to submit a physical one to me, but make sure I have the file. Remember, this is an all or nothing assignment. You either meet the requirements and earn full points, or you try again. Let's go through the procedure for option two, website. For this option, your team will create a website that can be used as a tool to capture your project's focus and why you think it's worth pursuing. As your project moves forward, this document can be used to communicate the major points of your project to a general audience or to help secure financial backing from organizations and businesses in your area. Sounds the same, doesn't it? Here's the deal. Using any available software and your own know-how from your computer science experience, from courses 
in CSP or cybersecurity, wherever you've learned to program a website, or if you'd rather, utilizing things like Wix or even Google Sites. Prepare yourself an active website. I want you to utilize any appropriate and available means and consider including the topics that I've listed below. You should have a project title. Choose a simple title that will easily describe your project. Have images, videos, or animations. Make sure what you include is easy on the eyes. Don't make it hard to read. Don't make it something that's going to cause people to have headaches. You want to attract them in with it, not push them away. Keep the scale of the site and its pages in mind. Personal information. You should consider the following things, just like on the Trifold brochure. Team's name or the project, teammates' full names, the school name, and a mailing address. You're not going to be at the school, and you're not going to put my address on this website. You can still put my name, though. Adam W. Davidson, good one to put there. A phone number to reach your team. You going to use Google Voice? You going to use your cell phones? You have a landline still? Do you have a team email address or are you putting all of your addresses on there? Or do you have a team lead that you're going to put their address? And of course, just like before with the brochure, you need to have your problem statement on here. Keywords or statements, same as always. List of some terms or thoughts to help others in understanding your team's project. You don't have to put it on the back of anything this time, so that is different. You'll have to figure out the flow of your website, make sure that it makes sense, and maybe have those key terms as an available option for them somewhere, or identify them like we do on the Canvas sites and have them as maybe something bolded. Have a list of experts. Always get their permission. Remember, your goal is to start validating and justifying your problem. When your team is finished with this one, if you choose option two, make sure that you submit a link to the site for me to look at. You either meet my requirements here or you don't and you try again. And that's okay. While you're working on this, don't forget to also be working on things like the team's problem statement and the product life cycle ass assessment. This assignment, it's only worth 50 points. You either submit a website URL if you're doing the website or you upload a file for me. Make sure it's something I can access. And with that said, guys, my next video will be to help with some of the other assignments that you have. We'll take a look at prior solution attempts and design specifications. There is no discussion to go along with this assignment. Keep in mind that you'll be identifying stakeholders and experts for quite some time, a good 37 days. As always, let me know if you have any questions or run into any problems and you want to bounce some ideas off of me. I'm always around. Have a great day. Don't forget, keep up with your work.